back to science class with me, Mark Rover. So today, we're just going to jump right into it, class. We're going to answer this question. Does farting make you weigh less? And I asked you guys this question. 70% of the people got it wrong. So I think we're going to update some mental models of the world today, which is our goal. We're not about memorizing facts. I want to give you guys principles that helps you understand the physical world around you. So, if you're new here, the format is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, yeah, we, we start with a question, we get three clues, we try to unravel what the answer uh, is by the end of class. And last time was my first one. Uh, everyone was really nice, I got some very good feedback. Um, we're, this is kind of rough, you should see the set looks a little bit better this time. Last time, like, the set, this, this desk was still wet with cement from having been painted. Uh, but we're figuring this out. And uh, yeah, my dream job is to be a high school physics teacher. I'm getting my credentials right now, so they won't let me teach yet. So uh, life pro tip, if you want to do something, uh, don't do it for the first time in front of 1.4 million people. But uh, coronavirus, here we are. It is what it is. And it was fantastic. I'm going to talk more about that later and about facing your fears. Uh, I'll turn the music on and stuff once we're done with all the science. So, the format here, about 15 minutes for the science, um, and then officially class would be dismissed, and then we'll do a Q&A at the end. It's more interactive than a normal video, so go ahead and ask questions if you want, and then I'll answer a few of them at the end in five minutes. And they could be questions about the lesson, or even questions about me. I don't do this very much, kind of interacting, so if you have personal questions, anything's on the table, uh, I just want to answer the ones I don't want to answer. So, there's that. Okay, so, to answer the question, does farting make you weigh less? Let's start with another question, which is, why does some stuff float while other stuff sinks? So the hammer sunk, but then this wooden block floated. And that brings us to clue number one, which is talking about this concept of density. So density is defined by how much you weigh versus how much space you take up, right? And I know if you're a physics student, you're like, well, weigh, it's actually mass. Difference between mass and weight, we'll get to that in another lesson. For now, all the formulas work, everything works, if we just consider this weight. So how much you weigh relative to how much space you take up. That's density. So. If you're less dense than the fluid that you're in, bloop, you're going to float. If you're more dense than the fluid that you're in, you're going to sink. All right? So I've got a hunk of metal here. And what's going to happen? It sinks. And you're like, big whoop mark. Metal sinks. Mind blown, right? I can tell you're not impressed. So all right, hot shot. I want you to think, how can I, this is a brain teaser, if I add more metal to that metal, how can I make it float? All I'm going to do is add more metal to this, another hunk of metal here. How can I make it float? If you get the answer right now, I'll be super impressed. Put it in the comments, tell the person you're next to, okay? You lose a few more points the longer it takes you, but I'm going to start doing this, okay? You thinking? How can I add more metal to make this thing float? Have you figured it out yet? Okay. What am I doing here? Metal. Metal. It now floats. I've basically made a boat, which allows us to create an alternative ending to Titanic. This is Jack. I had to make him a little more modest because he didn't have pants on this morning. That's a duct tape kilt. Okay. I'm the king of the world. Here's Rose. Jack, why are you wearing a skirt? It's not a skirt. It's a kilt. Okay. It floats. Look at that. And it floats so much, I bet we could even add more. We're going to add a, I don't know, this mango. It's still floating. There's an avocado, oh, the Titanic, never let go. There it goes. All right, now it eventually sunk, but it could support a lot of weight. 
And I know I just lost half the stream, because they're like, what the heck are you doing, Mark? You've lost your mind. But let's just talk about boats for a second. Like, what the heck? What's up with a boat? Boats have, like, you know, cruise lines have, like, gyms and pools on them. They're made of steel. How do those things float? Well, the key, okay, density, clearly somehow they have to be less dense than water, otherwise they wouldn't float. Well, if you add up all the weight of the pools and the tracks and the water slides and the steel relative to how much space it takes up, if you average that out, it is less dense than water. Because think about all the open air. That's their trick. Sure, they've got a steel hull, but they've got so much air in the middle. And when you average that out, it actually is less dense than water, and it's closer to just wood, right? A massive boat basically has the equivalent density of a block of wood. So uh, a really cool trick you can do here, too, is I've got this tennis ball here. You can see the water line is about halfway up the tennis ball. That tells you that this ball is about half as dense as water. So water is twice as dense. If the water line went up like 90% on the ball, then you would know that the tennis ball is almost as dense as water, but it's 90% as dense, right? That's a cool trick. Also, I want to show you this. If I put this tennis ball at the bottom, of course it floats. We're going to come back to that uh, a little bit later. That's a really, there's a real cool clue kind of tucked away in that. Um, so this allows you then to, well, I should say this. There's a dude named Samuel Plimsoll, real smart guy, engineer in like the uh, 1800s. All these ships kept capsizing. So he did something, and he's like, he did the math, calculated the density. He painted this line on the ships. This is called a Plimsoll line. If you've seen this red line on ships, what that sh line means is that you're allowed to put cargo on there. As soon as the water level gets to that line, you got to stop loading it up. If you put any more on there, then it is too heavy and the ship is going to sink. So he basically did that and saved a bunch of lives because ship people were like, oh, I'm going to put a few more crates of this. And they would, they would stand on the scale so it wouldn't weigh quite right. But it's like, dude, I don't care how you weighed it. The water level is not above that. You can't have the ship go because it's too dangerous. So this provides us with a fun game. If you've got a tub like this, you can fill it with water. It's called, does it weigh more or less than water? Or as David Letterman said, will it float? So we can start easy, styrofoam. I want you to either make a guess in the comment below or maybe tell, tell someone you're in the room with of whether you think it'll float or sink. Styrofoam, I guess, like I said, we're starting easy. Float, simple. So it's way less dense than water, right? Golf ball, any golf ball, golfers out there will know it will sink. Can of beans. What do you guys think? Sink. All right, we're getting a little harder. Cucumber, float or sink? More or less dense than water? Float, but it's close. You can see only a little bit sticking up. How about mango? This is what sunk our Titanic earlier. We got a sinker. OK, avocado, getting trickier, like I said. Sink or float? Float, but just barely. OK, four more. Can of Diet Coke. Float or sink? It floats. Can of normal Coke. Sinks. Dun, dun, dun. What would make normal Coke sink and Diet Coke not sink? I don't know for sure. My hypothesis would be there's like three tablespoons of sugar in Coke versus Diet Coke. So my guess is that just makes it more dense than water. Peanut butter, jar of peanut butter, float or sink? Does it sink? Oh, it floats, but just barely. And our final one, watermelon. Is it going to float or sink? Ooh. Watermelon floats. Hours. Hours of entertainment and we'll float or sink, OK? Now let's talk about that just a little bit. So think about like a fish. First of all, it's really hard to be neutrally buoyant. That means like you notice all of these are either on the top surface or on the bottom, right? 
Floating in the middle is really hard. I'm going to get to this later. I have a challenge to give you guys with regards to that. How does a fish do this? How does it go up and down, right? The answer is it takes advantage of this density equation. Fish are smart. They can't change their weight, right? They're not like gobbling things up right in the middle of they're swimming around. So they, they modify this, the space they take up. They have bladders that they kind of stretch out, same weight, but they're taking up more volume. What does that do? Makes them less dense. They go up. And they're like, oh, I kind of want to go down there and check that out. What do they do? They pull that in, so they take up less space. They become more dense. They go down, right? It's very clever. This also can help your mental model then. Why, what's the purpose of a life jacket? Well, a life jacket doesn't weigh very much, but it gives you more volume, more space. So if you take the average of you, including this life jacket, you are going to be less dense, which means relative to water, you're going to float easier, right? If you go into a pool and you hold your breath and you're on the top surface, you're going to stick, stick up there, you let that go, your volume goes down, and, you start to, and then you start to sink. So this doesn't work just with water. This is true for any liquid or any fluid and something in it. So there's a channel I like called Cody's Lab, and he did this experiment with mercury and an anvil. Okay, it doesn't seem to want to stay upright. I'll just let it tip over. There it is. It's floating. <laughs> Look at that. So, bonus question. How much less dense is that massive iron anvil relative to the mercury that it's in? Well, if you remember from the tennis ball, it's floating about halfway up, so it's about half as dense, because that's where the mercury line is, right? Not the water line. So relative densities is one way to thinking of this problem, right? That's the simple way. OK, let's do a little bit different way. This is a little bit more complex, but it allows further insight. Think of forces, OK? Forces, you're like, what's a force? That's a weird word. Force is like anything that acts upon you, right? So think of like a tug of war. And right now, there's the force of gravity. We all know about gravity, right? I've got this. <laughs> gravity was acting on that pen. Currently on me, there's a tug of war. Gravity's pulling me down, but what's keeping me up? The floor is pushing up with the same force. Tug of war. You know that it's a tie, just like in a real tug of war, because the middle's not moving, right? It's not going one way or the other. However, if I was standing on a trap door and the trap door went and it's gone, guess who's all of a sudden going to win that tug of war? Gravity's like, yoink, I got this, and I start to move down. That's when you know someone's winning is you start to move. So gravity is one force that pulls on something that's floating in water. The other force is clue number two, the buoyancy force. Well, what is that? Don't worry about these fancy words I'm about to say. The buoyancy force is equal to the fluid, surrounding fluid density times the space you take up, the volume, times the gravity. So I'm building up to a point that's about to blow your mind. Think about being in a pool, right? The deeper you go, the more pressure you feel, right? The lower you go, your ears feel all weird. You kind of feel compressed a little bit. It's because you have all this water above you weighing down on you, right? The deeper you are, it's like, oh, you're really feeling it. It's like being the bottom person in a dog pile. That's not where you want to be. There's a dog pile. I always try to be kind of towards the top because you have less people above you. So there's this gradient, right? The deeper you go, the more it is. So if I'm in a pool, there's actually a little bit more force at my feet than the top. Those all cancel out, and you're left with a net force kind of pushing you up. That's a buoyancy force. That will happen anytime there's a pressure gradient. So more pressure at the bottom versus the top, right? So this density force, this is you, or the buoyancy force, I mean. If the buoyancy force is less than the force of gravity, that's supposed to be an arrow, then you're going to sink. That's what happens with the can of beans. For the can of beans, gravity wins that tug of war. The can of beans goes down because the buoyancy force isn't enough to keep it up. However, if the force due to buoyancy is greater than the force due to gravity, who wins that tug of war? The buoyancy force does. And that's what's happening with the Diet Coke or this piece of styrofoam. The buoyancy force is greater. It wins the tug of war. 
and it floats. So, here's the big moment. What did we talk about last time? Air is a fluid, right? It's not like liquid, it's a lot less dense, but I'm basically in a fluid right now. And the higher you go, there's less pressure. The lower you are, there's more pressure. That's because there's just more air above you pushing you down, just like in a swimming pool. You know this is true because if you have a bag of chips, you go up to the mountains, it expands, right? That's because there's less air pushing out on it. If you go up in an airplane, your ears hurt. That's because it's a freaking metal tube flying through the air. They're pressurizing it to try and make it better on you, but they can't. It's a, it's a leaky metal tube. And so you feel that difference because the higher up you go, there's less pressure. Anything that has a gradient, pressure gradient, will have a buoyancy force. You ready for this? So the fact that this tennis ball, when I push it down, it goes up like this, right? That is the exact same principle, brace yourself, as a helium balloon going up. Both are in fluids. This is just less dense. We, it's like if you were a crab on the bottom of the ocean floor and I put this tennis ball next to you, whoop, you would see it go up. We are like crabs on the bottom floor of this ocean of air. This is so poetic. And we see this balloon going up. Where is it going? It's going up because it's less dense than the fluid around it right here, because the air is kind of pushing it up because of the gradient. And it will keep rising until it gets to the surface, which is where the, the, the density of that helium balloon is equal to the density of the atmosphere, because it gets less the higher you go. All right? So hot air balloons float because on average, if you take the basket and the people, plus the hot air, which is less dense, it's just less dense than this ocean of air that we're in, right? And it goes up. So this leads us to the final clue, which is that farts are less dense than air, OK? Now, technically, you have all the puzzle pieces you need. This one's a little harder to connect, but technically, the pieces are there. I want you to think about those puzzle pieces while I show you this final clip that kind of summarizes everything we learned. This is from a video I did. I made a fluidized uh, hot tub out of sand. Floats in the sand and other stuff sinks. This has to do with the buoyancy force, which is a function of the density of the surrounding fluid and the volume of the object itself. Whenever an object exists in a pressure gradient, there are forces from pressure pushing in on all sides, but they push a little bit harder the deeper that you are, which is why it hurts more to be the bottom guy in a dog pile, or it hurts your ears more the deeper you dive in the pool. And this makes sense because the deeper you dive, the more water there is above you pushing down. And if you add up the size and direction of all those areas, a bunch of stuff cancels out and you're left with one net force pointing upwards. That is the buoyancy force. And if your buoyancy force happens to be greater than your force from gravity, you float. And if your buoyancy force happens to be less than the force from gravity, you sink. Now we usually think of buoyancy with water, but you could think of things like helium balloons being buoyant in our atmosphere. So here's a trick question. Which of these has a higher buoyancy force? It's actually the rubber ball. Buoyancy force has nothing to do with the density of the object, just the volume. So since the rubber ball takes up more space, it has a higher buoyancy force. But, you might object, then why does the rubber ball sink and the balloon floats? Remember, it's a tug of war. The rubber ball sinks because the force from gravity on the thick rubber skin and the air inside is bigger than the buoyancy force. But for the balloon, even though it doesn't have as big of a buoyancy force compared to the ball, it still floats up because that buoyancy force is bigger than the weight arrow from the helium and the thin rubber shell. And the helium will keep rising like a ball floating up from deep in a lake. And then it will eventually hang out where the density of the atmosphere is roughly equal to the density of the helium in the balloon, because that's where the tug of war becomes equal. Whew, we made it through. Now back to my nephews. That's my nephew Beckham. He's watching right now. Hello, Beckham. I love you. It's a tough love. That was tough love. That's possibly my favorite clip of any clip I've ever made on YouTube. He was fine, even though it was like sand, eventually. So we're going to answer this now. We got all the puzzle pieces. First, I'm going to give you the grade school answer. Someone gave me the suggestion of breaking it down into different levels. So the grade school answer is, if I step on this scale, and I'm holding these balloons, which are less dense than the air around me right now, you take my average density, it's kind of like wearing a life jacket, 
what do you think happens to my weight on the scale? Well, let's say I had 5,000 balloons. Fun fact, at about 5,000 balloons, someone like me would float, kind of like the movie Up. The more helium balloons I'm holding, the less that scale is going to read. Conversely, if I have this heavy weight here and more weight, if I'm holding this, this is more dense than the air around me, that scale is going to read more. Well, that's scary to see that number. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, wait, that's not right. Okay, I weigh more. Okay. Well, we know from clue three, farts are less dense than air. And so, the answer to, does farting make you weigh less? Ladies and gentlemen, because farts are less dense than air, it's like you're holding a little fart and you, poof, let it go. And because of that, that scale is going to read a little bit more, right? So farting makes you heavier. So eat a lot of beans to temporarily have that gas in you. It's a great weight loss program, I guess, right? Farting makes you heavier. That's the grade school answer. The junior high answer, middle school, I'd say after farting, on average, you're a little bit more dense, right? Because you were holding that little helium balloon of fart. And so more dense things weigh down more in this ocean of air that we're in. So you're going to weigh a little bit more. The college answer is kind of look at the, the tug of war between buoyancy and gravity. And if you look at the, the delta V volume of the little fart you let out, uh, multiplied by the density of the air around you, that's like buoyancy's participation, the volume of air times the density of the gas inside you. On that tug of war, buoyancy gives up more. So gravity wins a little bit more, you're going to weigh a little bit more. Okay, my favorite answer though is the grade school one, right? Farting weighs less than air, so it's kind of like you're holding some helium balloons, you let go, you're going to weigh more. Um, did you catch that? Did you get the wireless transfer of knowledge from my brain through that camera and your phone to yours? This is magic. This is science, people. This is good stuff. This honestly gets me stoked and pumped. I love these aha moments. I love giving them to other people. Hopefully you had one. Uh, you can rewatch it if you didn't. Uh, so the winning answer submitted by someone was La Lassiu. I suck at names. You guys have some hard names to pronounce. He says, farts are mostly methane, which is lighter than air. So a fart is like a helium leaking from a balloon. I like that. It's very concise and simple. Um, so I'm going to start something new. I have a challenge for you guys, OK? First of all, I want you to get a tub like this and play Will It Float with your family uh, or just with yourself, whatever. Uh, and try and find some tricky objects. See if you guys can keep score and trick each other. Then what I want you to do is try and make something neutrally buoyant. So you could take this block of wood and you could take some washers or coins to it. Try and get it to be neutrally buoyant, like a fish. It's really hard. So if you get a good combination, send it to me on either Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, and I'll pick my favorite one and show it next time. The one that can last the longest. Even if you get three or four seconds, that's pretty good. Trust me. Uh, this isn't that easy. Um, OK, we're going to get to Friday's question. But first, I'm going to do a little moment. So this is where I turn on the music and have a little moment, right? This feels like you're in a, a Mark Rover video now. I want to talk to you guys just for two minutes about fear of failure. So I decided to do a live stream for the first time in front of a bunch of people. And it wasn't super smooth. But I kind of loved that, right? I love this opportunity to, to try and master something and to learn and do it a little bit better next time. And that can be scary, but that's also how you learn. It's like one of life's best treasures is, is having these opportunities. I gave a TED talk about this called the Super Mario Effect. And it's basically when you play a video game and you fall into the first pit, let's say Super Mario Brothers, you're not like, oh, I fell into the pit. I'm so ashamed. I never want to do that again. I failed, right? No, you're like, ah, oh, shoot, I fell into that pit. Okay, next time I gotta come a little bit higher. I gotta jump a little bit more, coming up with more speed. People were like, hey, Mark, great live stream. Do you want some feedback? I'm like, heck, yes, I want feedback. That's like playing Super Mario Brothers and we're on level three, too. And you're like, dude, I know how to get infinite, you know, extra men. And I'd be like, oh, don't tell me. Like, yes, I wanna know. I wanna get better at it and master this. But a lot of times with our life challenges, we say, oh, I just don't wanna try that because I might fail, and that's embarrassing to me, right? So if you treat your life's challenges like we treat video games and focus on like beating the game versus focusing on that I might fail, 
you could be more successful and have more fun and learn a lot more. So this is me punching coronavirus in the face and just trying something. And if you think, oh, but Mark, you're just a natural at this. No, go watch my first YouTube video. I will link it in the document below where you can also guess on next week's question. It's bad. You can see my improvement. And I love giving this gift to you guys of watching me improve in something so I can be good enough to teach physics in the classroom. You guys are helping me hone this in, right? All right, so go watch that TED Talk if you need some inspiration because you're like, oh, I gotta punch coronavirus in the face but I'm afraid I don't know what to do. Maybe that kind of help you push you over the edge. Um, question for next time, here we go. Hi, I'm Emily Calandrelli. On the internet, I am known as the Space Gal. And Mark, I was hoping to get back down to the basics. So I had a question for you. Why is the sky blue? All right, that's my friend Emily. She actually has a Netflix show coming out this summer where she kind of does experiments around the house. Uh, in fact, right now she's live streaming every day on Instagram. I will link her YouTube video. If you want to cool, do cool experiments in your house that you can do with just junk you have lying around your house, go check out her channel. She's got some really cool stuff. She's awesome. She's a great science uh, communicator. So why is the sky blue? We're keeping it simple, all right? That's next week. And maybe you kind of know it has something with frequency. I'm going to give you a way to remember that, a mental model that's easier than just like memorizing equations, because that's how we roll here. All right, so officially class is dismissed. The link for guessing how that works and other links from stuff I talked about, like Cody's video, will be in the YouTube in the description, so you can check that out. Um, I'm going to take the last five minutes to answer questions. I see that I'm way over time again. There's just too much cool science. I can't help it. I'm sorry. I really need to make these shorter. I'm trying. Uh, bear with me. Uh, here we go. So you're free to leave. Class is officially dismissed. But I'll just take the last five minutes to answer some question. Um, uh, what is with the watermelon theme on this channel? <laughs> I just love watermelons. They're beautiful. They're just cool. They look great when you explode them. Good question. Um, what did you get your college degree in? I did my undergrad at BYU in mechanical engineering. I did grad school at USC while I was working at NASA in mechanical engineering. So I'm a mechanical engineer. A lot of the stuff I do on my channel is kind of like mechanical engineering. Um, and beep, 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 beep. when did you decide you want to be a teacher? I just, I honestly, I crave that feeling myself of having those aha moments of like having a mental model, air is a fluid, and that helped me understand everything around me. When I was in high school physics, it, something just clicked for me, and I was like, oh, you can explain the world around you with math and equations. And I crave that, I love, I crave the feeling of giving that like gift to other people. So that makes me want to teach. Um, and I want to do it in the classroom because you get a little bit more of that personal feedback. People are like, oh, you can reach a lot more people through YouTube. I mean, it's true, but like, I'm talking to a camera right now in a room with two people, right? In a room, by the way, that has a couple of really cool robots for world records that we're currently working on. I would turn the camera, but I don't want to give anything away. You guys might steal my ideas. Uh, so yeah, I kind of want to do it in the classroom so I get like that selfishly, kind of get that feedback. I get to see the eyes light up. I know it kind of happens sometimes here, but there's something about seeing it in real life. Um, do one more question. Um, Okay, from, gosh, the, all the questions I pick are so hard to pronounce. Mr. Hewton, what is the pathway which took you in order to get to NASA? When did you start planning? I'll just say real briefly, and I'll end on this note. If you don't know exactly what you want to be when you grow up, that's okay. When adults are like, what's your 20-year plan? It's like, I don't know. Nobody knows. My philosophy on this is like crossing a river. If you see a stone in front of you, you kind of step on it. And then once you're on that one, you can kind of wiggle a few more stones with your toes. And it's like, oh, that one's the most stable. I like that one. I'm going to jump on that one, right? The key is just to dominate at every level you are. Just do your best. Try your hardest. Super Mario effect. And then that will just open more pathways for you. I got lucky. I put my resume literally in a stack of resumes, and they happened to pick mine. It was like excellent timing. So for me to tell you, oh, this is how you get to NASA because this is how I did it, would be like, hey, I won the lotto. The trick for picking the winning lotto numbers is like choose your cousin's birthdays, right? It's like just... My, my philosophy would just be like, just dominate wherever you're at. If you're in high school, try your hardest. The harder you try, the more you learn. 
the more opportunities you have. If you want to paint, paint like crazy, paint a ton, and then you'll get better, and then you'll have more opportunities, and it'll lead to other, uh, other cool things. And it's just a fulfilling way to live life. So that's it. Class is officially dismissed. I'll get the outro music, and we'll see you guys next time. And my guy who's supposed to bring in the thing at the end is a little slow.